Okay, members, thank you for coming here today, Emily, and uh, this is um, April's planning committee. I'm going to go right on it, Emily, and uh, notice in summons and meetings, the first item on the agenda. So you're here by members of the planning committee, here by someone to attend the monthly meeting of the planning committee, which will be held as a hybrid social distance meeting to be conducted remotely by uh, Physically in the chamber, there are a roast of Anne on Wednesday, the 10th of April, 2024, 2 p.m. We move on now and ask Maura to take members' attendance and apologies. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Alderman Derek Hussey. Apologies. Apologies. Alderman Keith Kerrigan. Here, Maura. Thank you. Alderman Neary McMorris. Here, Maura. Thank you. Councillor Jason Barr. Here. Thank you. Councillor John Boyle. Here. Thanks. Councillor Sean Fleming. And Shaw. Thank you. Councillor Paul Gallagher. And Shaw. Thank you. Councillor Christopher Jackson. And Shaw. Thanks. Councillor Fergal Leonard. And Shaw. Thanks. Councillor Rory McKee. Thank you. Councillor Sean Mooney. Here. Thank you. Councillor Patrick Murphy. Thank you. Councillor Lillian Barr. On our way. Thank you. And Councillor Grace O'Neillis. And Shaw. Thank you. Thank you, Maura. I'm going to now read out the broadcasting statement for physical meetings. Uh, I'd like to remind everyone present that this meeting will be broadcast live to the internet and will be capable of repeated viewing. This broadcast may be terminated or suspended in accordance with our protocol. If you are seated in the lower public city media areas, it is possible that the recording cameras will capture your image. And this will result in the possibility that your image will become part of the broadcast. By entering the council chamber and using the press or lower public seating area, you are consenting to being filmed and consenting to the use and storage of those images for webcasting or training purposes and for the purpose of keeping historical records and making those records available to the public. If you wish to avoid this, you should move to the upper public gallery um, and a copy of the council privacy notice may be found on the council website. Item four members is declarations of members' interests. Of course, you can indicate those now or during the currency of the meeting if they come to them. Um, number five is um, open for decision, chairperson's business. Um, I think Maura has a few items there that she wants to discuss and then I'll have a one or two myself. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Members, we've had a lot, number of late items, not too many um, this month, um, but you'll see in your information that you would received in the last few days, we received a, a letter of objection from Mr. Duff. We received a letter of objection from a Jared O'Neill and a letter of objection from Martina McCauley in regard to item three. Um, as a result of the letter of objection, um, we've, in given the content of the, the letter, we have a few, um, we, ha we have to consider some of the content of this letter in terms of um, references to some legal, um, legal uh, positions on it. So we, we will have to come back to you after we've time to consider it once we've received a published, the published version of um, this this particular reference that has been made. So um, at this point, um, I have to recommend to the chair and to the committee that we um, defer that application until we take that advice before we represent. Okay. And in terms of item four, we've also received a um, number of photo montage, um, and that's in regard 
to um, the erection of the dwelling on Lachal Road, um, Castle Derg. Um, so that's really all I have to do is cover the late items and, and the item three, Chair, so it's in regard to four and five then. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Maura. Um, members, items number four and five, as Maura cited, um, Lagal Road, Castle Derg, and then the, the, the one number five, 22 Northern Road in Derry. We've received, um, we've received notification from both agents that um, both of their applicants are out of the jurisdiction at the moment. Um, in issue number four, the, the email from Mr. Young did indicate that their that his applicant or his, his client or the applicant would like to attend and they would have attended via WebEx, but they didn't know that WebEx had, that the facility had dropped because of the, the change in the law. Um, so unfortunately, um, obviously Mr. Young wants his, app, his applicant there present in the meeting, which would be a benefit to members as well in case members have any questions. Summary number five is the same situation. The applicant is out of the jurisdiction. Um, given the fact that there are objectors on there as well, uh, it may be a benefit too uh, for members to have the applicant there just in case there may be questions based on the application. So my view would be that we should exceed to the applications and put them back for a month or I think one of them is for, for June, but at least the next one, Northern Road, should be in the next list. So if members have any indications or any, any, any views on it, please move forward now. But if not, then I'll take it your consent, Nate. That's fine. That's fine. Happy enough. Okay, okay. thank you, members. Okay, Maura's going to come in again on our couple of items there, members. Thank you. Under shares, business. Yes, sorry. Um, I should have noted earlier as well. We have um, received a letter from um, the director of NED, um, Mark Hammond, in response to the paper that um, some of the, the letters you'll have seen the update paper um, in the pack. So I'll cover it then um, at that stage um, for members that are, are interested in that update. And um, there's just an issue there with item 11, Chair, um, in terms of the yeah. paper 11. Uh, members, item 11 has been erroneously put on for information, but it should be on for uh, matters for the session. So just to bear that in mind when we come to it anyway. Okay, Mara, thank you anyway. Item, uh, members, item number six, matter, any matters raising from the open minutes of the planning committee meeting held on Wednesday, the 6th of March, 2024? No. Okay, thank you, members. Likewise, item number seven, matters raising from the open minutes of the reconvened planning committee meeting held on Thursday, the 7th of March, 2024. None. Okay, members, thank you. Well, members, we're going to go to item number eight now, which is the planned applications. We, we are down to two now. Um, that's numbers one and two. Um, I'm going to take the second one here because there's um, a speaker. So that is LA 11, 2023-2266. And it's a section 54 application to vary. And my recommendation is to approve. And Sarah is presenting that. But Mr. Crothers, could you come down under the into the chamber here, just in case we members might have any questions for you? That's great, Mr. Covers. Thank you, Yanomi. Member Sarah's taking that. So, Sarah, do you want to go ahead there? Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Item two is LA 11 2023 2266, section 54. This is part of the land zoned as H1B at Upper Gallia. Um, the application site received outline and then received reserved matters planning permission. Uh, the section 54 application is to vary conditions 3, 7, 10, 16, 21 and 23 of the reserved matters approval LA 11 2020 0072 forward slash RM and officer's recommendation is to approve. Now, members uh, should note that the colour and an underline which is referenced in the report for each of the conditions to be varied did not transpose in the report that was circulated to members, but I will explain and consider each of the conditions as part of this presentation. So this is the site location plan and the, um, the site location plan and the extract shown the seven plots outlined in red that the conditions to be varied relate to. So the section 54 application seeks to vary 
the conditions 3, 7, 10, 16, 21 and 23 of the Reserve Matters Permission, and this is to enable construction and occupation of seven dwellings at plots 22 to 28 as the first phase of the development without the requirement to undertake a number of wider site requirements relating to the overall development. So the site plan there just indicates uh, the seven plots. So um, the first condition to be varied is condition three, and this relates to the retention of trees on site. Now the condition wording is on your screen, and the wording that's highlighted in red and underlined is uh, the additional wording that's to be included in the condition um, that was approved as part of the reserve matters. So in relation to the retained trees, there are no retained trees near these seven numbered dwellings. The trees protected were identified on the development impact plan as part of the reserve matters approval. The nearest tree would be 30 metres away to the north and is on the opposite side of Upper Gallia Road. So the variation of this condition would allow the seven dwellings to be commenced, but will still ensure that tree protection measures are in place prior to any other part of the development being commenced when tree protection measures are required. The variation of the condition is considered acceptable to offers and would still protect the existing trees, which was a requirement under the assessment of policy in the dairy area plan and uh, PPS 7 as part of the reserve matters permission. So condition 7, uh, this relates to the proposed planting scheme. Again, the change to the wording is in red there and underlined. Uh, the agent is seeking this condition to be varied to reference the landscaping at the dwelling concern to allow the phase development of the reserve matters approval. And this variation of the condition is considered acceptable by officers and the planting required for the, required for the site still complies with PPS 7. In relation to condition 10, uh, this is, relates to NI water and foul sewage disposal. So the agent did provide evidence in the supporting statement of an Article 161 agreement with NI water for the 28 dwellings along Glenilla, which also includes these seven number dwellings approved in the reserve matters and the 21 previously were which were granted and constructed under a 2007 application. So NI Water were consulted on this Section 54 application and have no objections to the variation of the condition. As the reason for the condition is also to negate the any adverse effects on European sites shared environmental services were also consulted on the proposed amendment to the condition and reviewed the HRA that was carried out under the reserve matters application. And they've concluded that condition 10 can be varied without undermining the HRA outcome. So on this basis, therefore, officers are content that condition 10 could be varied as proposed with the change wording outlined in red and underlined on the screen. So condition 16 uh, relates to acoustic fencing. Uh, plots 22 to 28 are over 150 metres away from Skaglink Road, which is the distance in which acoustic measures are required. And as this is specified in conditions 17 and 19 of the reserve matters approval, the amendment to the wording therefore would allow the seven dwellings to be commenced in advance of provision of the acoustic wall and boundary measures. There would be no amenity impacts for the seven dwellings and environmental health were consulted um, in relation to this and are content that the amenity of the occupants of the dwellings and plots 22 to 28 would not be negatively impact, um, impacted and therefore they're also content that condition 16 is varied. Condition 21 then relates to access and visibility space. So the vehicular accesses relate to road 1 and road 7 off the existing Upper Gallia Road as per the drawn 134 revision 2 as referenced in the condition. So the variation of the condition with the amended wording highlighted in red um, would allow the seven dwellings to be constructed prior to revision of the access at roads 1 and road 7 as the seven dwellings do have their own uh, individual driveway accesses out onto an existing public road. And DFI roads were consulted on the amendment to the wording of the condition and accept the rationale behind the variation of the condition and have no objections. And then condition 23, this relates to uh, the private streets determination condition and the required works necessary for the improvement to the public road in accordance with approved drawings are separate to the requirement for the accesses for the seven dwellings. These seven plots will all have individual accesses to the public road off Glenilla and DFA roads were consulted on the proposed variation and again have, have no objection to the amendment. So just to summarise, um, officers are satisfied that the amended wording of the conditions is acceptable and will provide flexibility to allow the seven dwellings to be commenced. 
The variation sought still allows the requirements of all the other reserve matters conditions to be delivered for the wider site. The consultees, DFI Roads, Environmental Health, NI Water and Shared Environmental Services have no objections. So officers recommend to committee that the variation of conditions 3, 7, 10, 16, 21 and 23 are approved. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Sarah, for the presentation. Um, Matthew, obviously, you've heard Sarah's presentation. You can you can obviously present to the committee if you wish, or um, if you wish to, you have five minutes to make your presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Chair, members of the plan committee, thank you for affording me the opportunity to address you. I'm Matthew Crullers, and I'm a chartered town planner with Tetra Tech. I represent the applicant, we're Construction NI Limited, and we're agent for this Section 54 application. We're very pleased the Council has recommended approval. We would like to thank Council's planning officers for their efforts in progressing the application to a positive recommendation, with which we concur. I won't repeat everything that's been stated by Sarah, but the report and presentation has set out that the variations sought are very minor and do not conflict with the reasons behind the proposed conditions. They'll provide a level of flexibility which allows the applicant to deliver these seven new dwellings from the outset and prior to the remainder of the development commencing. Advice from the relevant consultees has been sought and they're all content accepting the rationale for the proposed variations and offering no objection. So we trust that elected members will agree with the recommendation for approval. I'm happy to answer any queries like the members may have. Thank you, Matthew. Members, any questions for Mr. Colors? No, Matthew, you only just think we just keep a seat there until we're finished. Anyway. So, members, there's no member, no questions for Mr. Colors. Any questions for Sarah? None, then. So, members, there's a recommendation in the front. Councillor Boyle. I keep it short and sweet, Chair. Um, I, it's, it's all logical enough and, and all seems to be in order, so I am content to propose that we proceed as is recommended to approve. Thank you, Councillor Paul. Is anybody there second application? Councillor Barr. Thank you, Councillor Barr. Okay, members, that's an application proposition to from Councillor Boyd, seconded by Councillor Barr to approve the, the application that's going before us. So I'm going to ask Mara to take a vote. Thank you. Chair, this is item two and it's proposal to accept the officer's recommendation to approve. Alderman Derek Cossey. Apologies. Alderman Keith Kerrigan. Or Mora. Thank you. Alderman Neary McMorris. Or Mora. Thank you. Mr. Jason Barr. Or. Thanks. Councillor John Boyle. Or. Thank you. Councillor Sean Fleming. Tam. Thank you. Councillor Paul Gallagher. Or. Thank you. Councillor Christopher Jackson. Uh, thank you. Councillor Fergal Leonard. Uh, thank you. Councillor Rory McKee. Uh, thank you. Councillor Sean Mooney. Uh, thank you. Councillor Patrick Murphy. Uh, thank you. Councillor Lillian Barr. It's not here yet. And Councillor Grace Manillis. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. That's been approved in full by all members. Only so, Matthew, thank you for coming down. That's approved, only, and it's been a long journey for a short meeting. But thanks very much, only. Cheers. <laughs> okay, members, moving on now. We're going to uh, miss the last application on the list today. That's item number one, and that is LA 11 2021 F recommendation to approve, and that's relation to uh, an application site at One Day at Campbell Terrace, Plum Bridge. County Tyrone and Sarah's taking that as well. Okay, Sarah, thank you. So item one is LA 11 2021 0881F. This is a proposed house and development comprising of five single story detached dwellings, nine detached two story dwellings and eight semi detached two story dwellings with associated access road. The site is approximately 35 metres north of 1 to 8 Campbell Terrace, Plum Bridge and officer's recommendation is to approve. So this application has been presented to committee for decision as there are more than five representations on the application. This is the site location plan and aerial photograph of the site. The site is located within the settlement limit of Plum Bridge Village as defined in the Straban area plan. The site is located within an area of outstanding natural beauty. There are residential developments to the north of the site and to the south is an existing terrace of dwellings known as Campbell Terrace. A primary school with an established hedge boundary and playground is located to the eastern boundary and Plum Bridge Medical Centre is located partially on the western boundary. The site is within walking distance to the village, which has a local shop, church and other amenities nearby. 
there are existing hedgerows and trees on the boundaries of the application site. So in terms of the consultees, these are all set out in detail in the report. None of the uh, consultees have any objections to the application and their conditions also set out in the report. So in terms of the representation, seven representations were received in the application and the issues raised include they consider the development should provide more houses to meet local housing need of Plumbridge, delays in the application, a concept plan showing land not owned by the developer, uh, the proposed planting and there was queries raised in relation to the submitted drainage assessment. So a detailed consideration of the representations um, is set out in members reports. So this is the proposal and the proposed site layout plan. The proposals for a total of 22 units. There will be five single storey detached dwellings, nine detached two storey dwellings and eight semi detached two storey dwellings. The development mix is suitable for the site as there is a mix of density in the surrounding area, including Campbell Terrace to the south of the site. The layout has been arranged to have the dwellings front and onto the internal road network. The topography slopes from north to south, however, consideration has been given to the levels across the site. A 1.1 metre retaining wall would be required between the site and the existing dwellings at Campbell Terrace. The dwellings which back onto Campbell Terrace are single storey in height, which will ensure protection of existing residential amenity. The existing line of fir trees also on this boundary um, is being retained along the boundary with Campbell Terrace. The report sets out an assessment of the trees that are proposed for removal, and this includes six trees which um, have been assessed as having ash dieback. However, additional planting is proposed to compensate for the loss of trees on the site. And existing hedgerows on the site boundaries will also be conditioned to be retained. There is a small pocket of open space provided at the end of the entrance road, which will provide an area of visual amenity. The private rear amenity space meets and often exceeds the guidance uh, set out in creating places and each of the dwellings has two dedicated parking spaces um, and curtilage provided and therefore the layout is considered acceptable under PPS 7. Uh, this is just a slide to show you the different house types. House type A is a detached dwelling, house type B is a dual frontage dwelling and then we have the semi-detached dwelling type C. And then this is just to show you the elevations of the detached single storey dwellings. So there are four different house types proposed for the development and the materials include black roof tiles and plaster render. The design form and materials are considered appropriate to the site and surrounding context. The detached single storey dwellings are those which back onto the existing dwellings at Campbell Terrace. Each has a back garden depth of 78 metres to the common boundary with an overall difference of 28 metres back to back to the existing properties. The four metre level difference over over the separation distance of 28 metres is considered acceptable. So in terms of the policy assessment, uh, the site is located within the development limits of Prom Bridge on unzoned land. Uh, there is a previous plan in history also set out, um, which is set out in your report for housing on this particular application site. The proposal meets the criteria set out in QD1, QD2 and the addendum to PPS7 and a quality residential environment has been achieved. In terms of PPS8, there is a small pocket area of open space proposed within the site, which is welcomed, and the site is also within walking distance to an equipped play park, which is located within the village. Impacts on bats and natural heritage features, including birds and badgers, has been considered in detail, and Natural Environment Division have no objections and welcome the planting proposals of native species planting. Impacts on designated sites has also been assessed, and an appropriate assessment was carried out, which concluded there would be no adverse impact on any designated site, and uh, this is subject to condition. And in terms of PPS3, the private streets determination has now been agreed with DFA roads, and the internal layout will be adopted. Uh, works will be required to provide the access and the visibility displays to the site, and third party land is also required. But the appropriate notice has been served on the P2 as part of the application process. So, DFI roads have provided conditions. There will be no impacts on archaeology or listed buildings, and therefore, the proposal complies with PPS 6. And a drainage assessment was also submitted, which complies with FLG 3 of PPS 15. So, officers' recommendation is to approve subject to the conditions in the report. Thank you, Sarah, for that presentation. Members, we don't have any um, speakers uh, from the agents, etc. So I'm going to pass over now to speakers for Sarah. So first in the case, speaker is Councillor Leonard. Go ahead, Councillor Leonard. Uh, go on, Margaret. Bigger look. Thank you, Chair. Um, just like to say from the outside, uh, I welcome this proposed housing in this rural area. The Plum Bridge has been underinvested in for, for decades, and should all these houses be provided for 
families in the future will undoubtedly be beneficial for local businesses, for sports clubs, for and for the schools. So, after all, the speaker's chair will be in a position to make a proposal. Go on, Margaret. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Leonard. Councillor uh, Alderman Kiarigan. Thank you very much, Chair, for allowing me in. And it's just, I suppose, again, welcome as as Councillor Leonard has, has stated in regards to it, because oftentimes in the, some of the smaller rural settlements, getting developments into them, uh, it's, it's just not happening. And there's not that additional. I know we have plans and what we would like to see and how we can see some of these smaller settlements grow, but it is difficult sometimes to get that. And I'm content. Uh, as, uh, some of the reasons, I suppose, but uh, I'm just confirming with Sarah that that's the case there. The, the, any difficulty with sightlines can be overcome and can be sorted out. That that you've said that in your report anyway. So that's that's at hand. And again, one thing which is positive there in regards to Plumbridge, but again, it's been the box has been ticked here on the report here in regards to capacity for the sewerage, because that's a that's a problem in a lot of other areas that the just the the capacity is not there for additional building. So I'm saying content that that's there in Plumbridge. So again, I, I'm. Content in regards to that, and, and as well uh, the conditions, the list of conditions there. So as I say, I'm I'm content. Uh, just more comment than anything else, but just confirming no issue with the sightlines, no issue with the sewerage, and if you need, I can come on after uh, Councillor Leonard if you want. Thank you, Chair. Yes, okay, to the chair, uh, the required sight lines have been demonstrated on the plans, and the applicant or developer agent has served notice on the third party landowner. So that is what is required in terms of the planning application. Um, and in terms of the uh, sewerage, NI Water have uh, no objections subject to condition. They have advised that for the site there is available capacity in the wastewater treatment works. Any other members wish to come on? No. Okay, Council Leonard, go ahead there. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, well, I've read through uh, the planner's report and, and threat repeating what's already been said, just to add. Uh, that I'm content that the objections have been dealt with, sorry, by, your, by yourself and satisfactory answers. So for what I said previously, I'd be uh, happy to propose that we accept this. Thank you, Councillor Leonard. Alderman Kerrigan. I'm just content, Chair, to second the proposal put forward by Councillor Leonard. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Members, that's uh, was a recommendation to approve this application. It's been proposed by Councillor Leonard and seconded by Alderman Kerrigan, so we'll take out the vote now. Thank you, Morning. Go ahead there. Thank you, Chair. This is item one, members' proposal to accept officer's recommendation to approve. Alderman Derek Hussey. Apologies. Alderman Keith Kerrigan. Or Mara. Thank you. Alderman Neary McMorris. Or. Thank you. Councillor Jason Barr. Or. Thank you. Councillor John Boyle. Or. Thank you. Councillor Sean Fleming. Ta. Thank you. Councillor Paul Gallagher. Or. Thank you. Councillor Christopher Jackson. Uh, Thank you. Councillor Fergal Leonard. Uh, Thank you. Councillor Rory McHugh. Uh, Councillor Sean Mooney. Or. Councillor Patrick Murphy. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Councillor Lynn Barr. Paul. I think. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. And Councillor Grace O'Neillis. Uh, Thank you. Unanimous chair. Thank you, Maura members. That's fully approved that application. Uh, thank you for that. So we're now moving on to item number nine, and that's an update report on correspondence with the National Environment Division, uh, NIEA. And Maura's going to take us to that. Members, this is a, an update paper just to pull together uh, a number of pieces of correspondence, um, which a member of the committee had raised a concern back in uh, the committee in January. And we, uh, regarding correspondence that he had um, been alerted to in regard to planning application and, and consultations with NED DERA. Um, as a result of that, it was agreed that the planning committee would write to DERA in regards to delays and the nature of some of the correspondence we'd received the previous December regarding um, the Mona policy and the protocols um, in regard to intensive farming. Um, also, um, members, you know, the background there is in the report in regard to, to, to the, the previous correspondence. We hadn't received any um, response to that letter um, from the 30th of January from the chair. However, we did get a, a very short piece of 
correspondence which I circulated there um, yesterday or Monday. Um, which you'll see was was quite limited, but we did get a response back. Um, I've also included in the report um, and the paper that, as a, I'm presently the the head of planning chair, and we have been concerned as a group um, of head of plan, plannings across Northern Ireland, and we have raised the concern because obviously we're dealing with lots of consultees, and uh, we had asked um, for representatives of NED to come and attend. Now, we did find it a very useful meeting. We followed that up, as you can see, with a letter in regard to some of the suggestions we've made. We did receive in the interim as heads of planning um, some positive, um, I suppose, um, feedback from Mark Hammond in regards to future direction. As, as I suppose what he had highlighted was that the backlog that he'd pre previously been dealing with had been um, significantly reduced, which was one of my main reasons in saying, well, we can't even got a backlog anymore. Can we please <laughs> consider how we improve the situation? So um, I just wanted to highlight that strategically that we've been working as heads of plan to try and improve that. There is a statutory consultee forum, which I used to sit on, but I don't now because I sit on other boards and we share that out, but we have raised the concern and we are hoping to get the representative back. But I'm told that I will receive a response to that letter shortly and I will follow that up with yourselves again. But um, in the meantime, in terms of our committee, um, you will see the, re the response that we received, um, which was quite um, short. And I'll leave it back to the chair who may want to comment on that. Thank you. Thanks, Maura, for that outline uh, nice and this issue. Um, this is a matter raised initially by Councillor Leonard, but you can see with the updated letter, uh, more so at the penultimate paragraph, where, they, where Mr Hammond has basically said that duty resourcing, that's things are likely to change in the foreseeable future. But um, with that said, does anybody want to come on? I think maybe Councillor Leonard, do you want to come on on this matter? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, so thank you. More for bringing it to the table again, and thank you for the for the work that you're doing on this. It's a it's a terrible situation for the, the farmers involved, and nothing's happening except for apologies for nothing happening. Um, it talks Liz Lockran's letter there on the it's the nineteenth to twelfth. She talks about but reconsulting. Can you explain to me what 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 does that mean, Maura, and has it happened? Thank you. Thank you um, for letting me in. Thanks for that question. That goes on to some more detail that I wanted to update you on. So as a result of the pausing exercise in December and then the reopening of the consultation, um, because we at, at one point um, officers were advised and councils were advised not to, they, they weren't proceeding and didn't want consultations. So in January 2024, we did what was asked of us in this, uh, as a result of those, le those letters from Liz Lochran. And we consulted um, our various, um, we have 13 cases that are currently, because um, that was one of your questions before, Councillor Leonard, that are subject to this, um, I suppose, delay or consideration in terms of the ammonia policy. Um, we've only had one case that's been responded to. The other 12 remain outstanding. Um, but it's just to be mindful also that three of those 13 cases are impacted upon in regard to the misrepresentation of soil sample analysis investigation issue, which I know members are all aware of. So we've only got three cases that are, are um, involved in that, but also are subject to this ammonia issue. So. Um, the numbers are limited, but they're still significant for the individuals concerned. A number of cases, um, we also still have other outstanding issues. So it's not just NIEA that these the, these are actual cases we are awaiting on. But um, we're not sure, maybe some of the information is not forthcoming from the agents, but it may be because of the principle of this um, might be something they're waiting for the outcome on in terms of the NIEA issue. So um, I just wanted to update members on the scale of this and the number. Um, so that's that's the information I have to date. Hopefully that's helpful. 
Yeah, thank you, Maura. Um, Thanks, Maura. You could want to come on again. Sorry, sorry, thank you, Andrew. Sorry, yeah. Chair. Um, I thought there was only four cases. I didn't know that it was 13. Um, in your own professional opinion, is there anything else that we can do to, to, to speed the thing up a bit for these people? Thank you. We need their expert advice in regard to the individual cases. However, the wider issue is uh, in terms of this wider ammonia policy issue is something that is, is going to be uh, a key issue for all councils in Northern Ireland and all planning applications that are affected by it. So that is a, a major key issue that, if you know, has been raised a number of times um, at a strategic level. So I would imagine that's that's how key it is. It's not just it's not just relevant for ourselves. Um, so the wider ammonia policy issue needs to be addressed for us to deal with these cases. We need the expert advice, and um, we've we've considered all our options before, but that's the position we've always remained in. Thanks. Thank you, Maura, for that update. Um, members, I don't know how how we can advance this now, even as a as a as the planning committee. I don't know. I have no idea as myself how we can advance it practically. Um, it seems from the letter, the updated letter from Mark Hammond, that obviously what they say is given current resource issues faced by teams and need to upscale staff. So it seems like a human resource issue within DERA and within that department. So I don't know if our own respective parties or platforms can advance it ourselves in, a, in our own private capacity as councillors. Maybe that's one avenue, but at the moment I don't know how we as the planning committee advance that given that. That's what we've been told. Um, we do rely on the, the consultees, their expert evidence, they advance our own applications, but that's what we're saying. Um, so at this point in time, for our purposes today, only thing I can suggest is we note the content and perhaps make it an, an issue or an item. Um, go ahead, Councillor Kerrigan. Just, just, just briefly, Chair, but is there any 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 benefit at all in, in sending the letter off to the, the dear minister and trying to get him to resource this department a bit more? Maybe it is, I say, an upskilling as a thing that just takes time, but is there any benefit in doing that? Because of the issues, I say, now, I say, Councillor Leonard stated there, we thought initially there were four applications, we have 13 in our district, never mind what else other ones have across the country. That's a thought now, Alderman yeah. Kerrigan. It did, it did occur to me when you were actually, when I you know, saw so you come on there, I thought, Perhaps if we if, 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 if that's a proposal and a segment, we could maybe you know, we can send a letter off to the, the minister on that basis. You know, we're responding to our concerns about this issue, and if even the minister could himself um, divert resources or give or give attention to this issue, which is pressing. There are many issues, but this is pressing the art committee, and this is the and there's 13 applications that are standing that can't be advanced because of this issue. But if members are happy, we can. And draft a letter and send it off on behalf of the committee. Everybody accept? What do you have, Leonard? Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I'd be happy to second your proposal there by Councillor Kerrigan. It's important we keep the that we keep the pressure on and keep identifying how important this is to people in the rural areas. Thank you again. Okay, Councillor Leonard. Well, listen, members, we've noted that um issue anyway and obviously and then we've updated uh, officers on our faces so that's a letter going out anyway so we're happy to move on to the next item then yeah okay item number 10 that's the transboundary consultation one farm renard for their observations april 24 that's andre's taking that go ahead andre thank you um thank you chair um so agenda item 10 uh, the purpose of this report is to advise members of uh, receipt of correspondence from DFI planning in relation to a transboundary application for a proposed one farm development um, for 15 turbines in County Donegal. Um, so the council were initially consulted on the application in March 2022 and a paper was presented to members um, in June 2022 in response. Um, the response that was issued to the DFI um, is attached as an appendix. So the latest correspondence from DFI advises that the department has received further clarification or observations in respect of the application um, from the applicant was sent directly to board Planella um, and DFI have asked if um, the council wish to have any comments or make any comments in light of the additional information received. Um, so members will note from the, the paper that the previous cons consultation response was issued 
um, and at that time members had no comments to make on the application. So officers will respond <clears throat> excuse me, to DFI and include any comments uh, members may wish to make on the additional information that's been received. Thank you. Thank you, Andre, for that there. Members, have any updates for Andre? Or do we want to make any or representations since the last time? Okay, well, members, the, the recommendation is they note the content of the paper and if there's, um, well, members of any, if they have any further observations they want to make, then they can obviously send them through to Andre and Mora and they'll be passed on accordingly. Thank you, members. Next item is item number 10, uh, sorry, number 11, that's proposed mineral alteration to the draft Donegal County Development Area plans for Bone Crana, Balba Face, Dunorder, and Bondorn. Anything, Isabel? Can you take that? Thank you, Isabel. Good afternoon, Committee. Thank you, Chair. The purpose of this paper is to advise members of a formal consultation letter that has been received from Donegal County Council regarding the proposed material alterations to the draft Donegal County Development Plan 2024 to 2030, including area plans for Bone Crana, Balba Face, Dunorder, and Bondorn. There are a number of environmental reports accompanying it, including the Strategic Flood Risk Assessment Report. It's one of a series of consultations issued by the Council as part of their statutory public consultation requirements for the draft plan, and we have been consulted uh, as an environmental authority. The latest consultation centres on potential uh, materializations to the, material alterations to the draft plan, of which there are 185. These material alterations have been proposed as a result of comments received from the last public consultation exercise, which ended in October of last year. The amendments involve material alterations to all parts of the plan, uh, parts A, B and C. For the most part, uh, the proposed amendments to part A involve rewording and or the addition or omission of minor text, likely to address any potential vulnerabilities or omissions. Uh, part A also contains amendments to housing allocation, um, proposals for uh, additional development limits, um, proposals for the lowering of uh, the standards of, uh, for, sorry, excuse me, for how the wind energy area is considered from not normally permissible to open to consideration. Um, but the only one that may have had an issue on our district would have been um, some alterations to the preferred 10T route improvements network, but they were so minor um, as to not be material to us in our district. Uh, it's not considered that any of the proposed material alterations under Part A will have any significant impact on Darien Strabane District as the amendments either relate to local considerations such as the housing allocation or relate to areas that are sufficiently removed from our district as to not have a significant impact. Part B centres on area plans for Bonkrana, Bondoran, Ballybuffet, Stranorlar. <coughs> uh, it's not considered that any of those proposed material alterations will have any significant impact um, as they relate to zonings, flood risk and settlement limits of settlements sufficiently removed from our district again. Part C centres on the settlement framework alterations and provides for small extensions to the development limits of 16 existing settlements. Of these 16, only one is sufficiently proximate to our district as to have potential impacts, and that's MUF. But you will note in your paper that, uh, again, the amendments are so minor as to not be a concern for our district. Having reviewed all the material, uh, material alterations and associated maps, it's considered that no comment is required from DCSDC on this occasion, as there will be no significant impact on the Darren Strabane District, but the proposals are noted for our records. And in terms of the accompanying environmental and flood reports, um, this council, uh, the officers consider that the, they are comprehensive and appropriate in scope and the conclusions reached um, we would concur with. So um, just to note that the consultation actually closed on the 5th of April. So a draft letter um, was sent with the agreement of the chair from the chair, um, just setting out what we have said here today. And this is just an opportunity now, um, because it was a draft stage, if there are any further comments that any um, of the committee members would wish to make and to take a vote on the letter as you've seen in your packs. Thank you. Thank you, Isabel, for the presentation. Um... Much obliged to that. Members, um, as Isabel said, there, there's not to be any 
impact on our district council area. So um, a letter uh, that's been drafted has outlined that, has outlined that as well. But in of that, does members have any questions for Isabel? If... Go ahead, John. Uh, no, look, I have no questions, Chair. Um, I'm assuming you need a proposal for that. So if that's the case, then I'd propose it. Um, it's very evident that they're so far removed from our city industry council area that they couldn't have any impact on, on us to any significant degree. So um, happy enough to propose that we proceed um, as has already happened in a way. Thank you, Councillor Boyd. Any other members, are they content to that letter to issue? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Barr, for that second. Okay, as well. Thanks very much. That there now. Members have noted that, me, and that letter can go out now. Thank you. Members, moving on now. Uh, items 12, 13, and 14 to Gelder are for information only. Um, if anybody wants to raise anything, please do now. Not, we can leave any confidential. Okay. Um, can we have a proposer, Sector, for confidential? Councillors Boyle and Barr, thank you. 